Good morning, I'm Tim from Cooking Light. And this morning I'm going to show you how to make a French rolled omelette, which is a different beast from omelettes that you might be used to Western style at your favorite breakfast place or diners and things like that. In that, first of all, it's rolled, obviously, uh, but there is no browning on it. And there's a difference in the textures between the outside and the inside. The outside is, is, is baby skin smooth, and the inside is is custardy creamy. In fact, cheese inside would be redundant. It's absolutely delicious on its own plane, which is what makes a French omelet kind of distinctive. Versus a Western omelet where you put all kinds of fillings in it, you get a little bit of brown on it, and that's fantastic too. This is an entirely different style. It tastes a little finesse, it goes very quickly. Um, it's the kind of thing that they say that, that um, they test French chefs to see uh, how good they are in the kitchen. It's one of the early tests to see if they can do a good omelet, if they can roast a good chicken. It's the kind of thing that can take a, a lifetime to master. I've done a hundred of these. I've done, well, hundreds of these. And I can say that maybe 30% come out perfectly. The other 70% come out really nice and well enough to eat. So, you know, don't worry about making it perfect because it's going to come out just fine. But I'm going to start by showing you with a two egg omelet and an eight inch pan. Tim, should my eggs be room temperature? Should they be cold? How should we do them? Um, you know, the temperature isn't all that crucial. You can pull them right out of the fridge. Uh, it, it, obviously, it, it, the whole process will, will go a little quicker if you uh, use room temperature eggs. But um, I think when you're first starting, slowing it down a little bit will help. Mm -hmm. So just pull them right out of the fridge. Don't worry about letting them, letting them rest at room temperature so or anything like that. Extra large, large, what size eggs? It's really confusing. That's a good question because I get confused too. And I, 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 thank God my wife buys the eggs. It's, <laughs> it's uh, what, what, it, God, well don't get jumbo. How about that? Don't get jumbo. <laughs> and, and, and I think it's extra large standard. I'm sorry. I, I feel like I should know this. I feel dumb about this. But I, I I, whatever standard. Doesn't matter. With that, what, it, Just not jumbo. Yeah, don't get jumbo. Ju I, like, who needs jumbo? Like, what was that? A goose egg? <laughs> so, you start with with uh, with. We're gonna do a two egg omelet because we're using an eight inch pan. So Tim, you came with your own pan today. I Tell came me about with my. Pan. I came with my own pan. I'm very attached with to this pan. I I, I take this pan everywhere. Uh, along with the helmet, they told me to take off my helmet for the purpose of this video, but. Um, this pan is, is a little bit well used, in fact it's a little bit more well used than I'd like, but I can still make it work. Ideally, for a two egg omelet, an, an, uh, an eight inch pan is perfect because it gives you the perfect thickness and uh, it, it'll get done just in time and you'll, and you'll get just the right amount of creaminess. If you want to do a three egg omelet, you can, you can use a, uh, more of a ten inch uh, skillet, which we have uh, somewhere, but that's fine. At any rate, a, a, a ten inch skillet or something. There's a tennis skillet. You can use one of these jabbies, and that's fine. The key is, though, to make the, the Teflon surface as pristine as possible. And you don't have to go out and buy a $50 or $75 pan to make this happen. In fact, I use cheapies all the time, because even if you do get the expensive ones, the Teflon coating is going to wear down pretty quickly. Um, so I go through a few of these a year. Um, consider them semi-disposable. The important part is, is keeping the Teflon intact. And so, in, in doing so, don't put a whisk in there. Don't, you'll see some, some people stirring it with a fork. That's insane. Do, do, use, use a silicone special or rubber special, things like that. Things that won't scratch the surface. So, we've cracked our two eggs. Um, and now, I'm just going to whisk them up. If you talk to five, French chefs about making a French omelet, you're going to get five different answers. Fortunately, this morning you're going to get the right answer. So, should the eggs be whisked till they're frothy? Should they be light? That's a good question. That's, that's part of the point. Some, some people say they should be frothy uh, to get a lot of air in there. To my taste, if they get frothy, then they're going to get flat and dense once they're cooked, because that air is going to pop. Um, those bubbles will pop. What's important to me is that I get all the white and all the yellow mixed together as homogeneously as possible, so you don't end up with white spots in, in the omelet, which are 
It's not a horrible thing, it's just a little unsightly. So you can see that it's pretty well mixed together. It's not overly frothy. All right, it's a little frothy, but you know, whatever. It's, it's not terribly frothy, how about that? Some people will, tell you, and as far as seasoning goes, some people will tell you that um, to, to put the salt in uh, the bowl before it goes into, into the pan will start to toughen the eggs. I think that's taking it a little bit too far. I mean, this is an omelet, this is your eggs, let's not get too serious here. Because it goes so quickly in the pan, I don't like to screw around with anything but the texture of the eggs while they're in the pan. So I like to season it first. A uh, note on salting the eggs, Eggs are one of those things, one of those ingredients where salt goes further than you actually think it does. So just a little dash will do, particularly with two eggs. You can always salt more later if you want, but oversalted eggs are, I mean, oversalted anything is inedible, but for some reason, oversalted eggs are just, I mean, it'll ruin your day. You also did the make it rain method. You didn't go just dump it in there, you put it from the top, so why? Exactly. Well, I. I'm doing, I, I grab a bunch, I grab more than I'm going to, to use, and I'm not gonna sprinkle more, but I, but, I, but I sprinkle it over here so that it spreads in evenly. I'm not even gonna bother uh, stirring it in because once it goes into the pan, it's going to be completely mixed in anyway. We, uh, we also use some pepper. This is um, cracked um, coarsely. You can, you can crack it finely. It's all a matter of taste. Some people will tell you, a lot of people will tell you to use uh, white pepper. I don't know about you, but I don't have a white pepper grinder on hand. Um, so if you don't, use black pepper. They're, they're talking about the sightliness of it again. This is, uh, it, but let's not, again, take it too seriously. This what is, is an omelet. White pepper is, is simply uh, black pepper that's, take, that's had the hull taken off. But the flavor is very different. And if you're, if you're entirely used to black pepper, the flavor can be a little bit off-putting. It's, it's, um, it's, it's a little um, floral, I would say, it's, but it's still pungent. And it's not, it's not that it's hot, it's just, um, it's, it's, it's more, it's, it's very distinct. And it can take over a dish if you use a little bit more than, than you want. So we've got our salt and our pepper in our, in our pan, in our eggs. We're going to heat this now to about medium heat. Um, I would suggest for your first few times out, medium to medium low, because anything higher than that, the eggs are gonna cook too fast, um, and it's just, it will not come out right. You don't want these things to scramble before you've had a chance to let them set and, and to roll them, and medium to medium low heat will let you do that. And there's a good way to test that. Um, Rather than just touching it, which is fun too, because you know, um, you can put the butter in. Now, oftentimes when you when you're cooking with butter, you want to hear the sizzle. You want to see it sizzling and frothing, and that tells you that your pan is hot enough. Not the case with a French omelet. You want to see it like this. It's melting, but it's not sizzling and frothing which is telling you that, that your pan is getting warm, but it's not too warm. If your pan, if the butter is sizzling and frothing, when the butter goes in, luckily, like with a lot of cooking, um, there's a very easy fix for that. Just take it off the heat, let the bubbles subside, just let the pan cool off for a second, then put your eggs in. Do you use cooking spray? Personally, no. But, 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 but if, if you're a cooking spray person, Go right ahead, I give it a whirl. I, I can't promise good results with, in this particular case um, because um, butter, A, flavor, but B, it gives you um, a whole lot less adhesion. And, and, and cooking spray might you know, cause it to stick, and, and, and non-stickage is really important here. So, you're knowing it's coming, you know it's coming at the heat when you start to see it, it uh, a bubble a little bit, which is, which is kind of what you want. You want it to bubble and froth a little bit. And that's when it's okay to get your eggs into the pan. Now, again, you don't want your eggs starting to cook immediately. So when they hit the pan, if you hear nothing, rejoice because things are going well. If you hear a big sizzle,
take it off the heat. Here's the thing about heat regulation with an omelet. Don't worry about the burner. Keep, it, keep the burner where it is. You're going to be moving the pan. Okay? You're constantly moving the pan. You're shaking the pan. And you see how I'm doing it? As if I'm making soft scrambled eggs. I'm moving it around. If things start to go a little fast, faster than you'd like, just pull it up off the heat. That way you don't have to worry at all about the burner. You, you don't have to you know, adjust the burner at all. You're regulating the heat by moving the pan around. And you'll see that things are getting about half scrambled here. We've got half fully cooked curds and some that are kind of creamy. I'm going to let it go just a little bit longer before I form it. And now I'm going to form it by sort of Jingling it, jiggling it around the, the bottom of the pan so that it covers it. I'm going to run the spatula along the sides to get clean sides. And I'm going to let it sit there for a minute. Now, here's, and, and also for your first times doing this, here's a good thing. You're going to let it sit for a minute, kill the heat. Um, this way, you're going to be more assured not to get any browning on the bottom. It's, it's crucial for a French omelet not to get browning on the bottom. I, I didn't make the rule, I just follow it. So you, you'll notice here that there's a glisten on the top of the eggs. But when I tilt, it's not going anywhere. So that means the egg isn't runny. It's just creamy and custardy. Um, and that is part of the beauty of the French omelet. So you get that creamy, custardy inside and you get the smooth outside. So you're just going to let it sit for about a minute just so that the bottom can set. And now, here comes the fun part. We're going to roll it out. And to do this, we're going to grip the handle like this. We've got our plate. This is a very good sized plate for a small two egg omelet. And we're just going to start to roll from the handle end, like this. So at this point, if it wasn't doing this, can I just scramble? At this point, if it's not doing it, just scramble it. Absolutely, that's a great idea. It's gonna be delicious. Or, or if you want, uh, flip it and cook the other side. I mean, you, you can do any number of things. Um, I, uh, I got, you know, throw it away because I just get mad at myself. <laughs> but but don't don't waste food. That's horrible. I, I don't throw it away. I, I, I have dogs. They love it. So um, we're just gonna roll it out in the direction of the plate. Now if this if this pan were a little bit more nonstick than it were, what I would have done is bumped it down so that this part is on the lip of it and I can roll it right out. But I can roll it out anyway. Now that rolls right onto the dish. And you want it seam side down. Now you'll notice no browning. No browning. <laughs> but here's the thing. You won't, you're gonna want to yield this little lily two ways, okay? Just a bit of butter. And this is what it'll amount to is less than a quarter teaspoon. So you're not adding a whole lot of cal calories and fat here, but what you're you're adding is glory. And <laughs> It's going to make it beautifully glistened. You're just running this along the surface so that it glistens. And of course, it's going to give it just a little bit of extra butter flavor. And then chives on top for green and a little extra flavor. Et voila! So, uh, that is how it is plated. But let's see if we can get a look inside because this is going to be the proof in the pudding or the custard. Um, it's a great, first of all, let me just say with Mother's Day coming up, this is a great Mother's Day treat. It's a special treat. It's a, it's a one serving dish. French rolled omelets are not a great crowd dish because 
you can only do one at a time. And you can't let them sit for a long time. They're not gonna get any better as they sit. They can sit for about 30 seconds or so, or, or 45 or maybe a minute. And that's fine because the custard is just gonna set a little bit inside and it's gonna help the texture. But if you have them sitting around for, for a whole time, you're gonna get cold eggs and, and nobody's gonna like you. If you look inside there, you can see how the top is smooth and cooked. The inside is custardy and creamy. And that is, that's the beauty of the French omelet, is appreciating the subtlety between these two textures and flavors. The, the French have a, an amazing knack for taking um, a simple, perfect ingredient like an egg and then running it through an irreducibly complex process um, to make it something even better than it was originally. And the French rolled omelet is the perfect example of that. Want to see it again? Because I can do it again. <laughs> I can do it again. I can do this all morning. No, I think we'll send people to cookinglight.com to get the recipe. Okay. Thanks, guys. Enjoy.